and we're rolling. So I'm about a week and a half removed from the Tahoe Rim Trail. Uh, beautiful trail, absolutely incredible experience. And I wanna talk about the gear that I brought on the TRT. Uh, I see a lot of videos um, of people posting their gear and their gear reviews before going on their through hikes or their long distance hikes or whatever hike they're going on. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to do it afterwards and talk a little bit about my experience with the gear, what I would change, what worked out well. Um, hopefully that can be helpful. I may not go into every piece of gear that I took. I did make another gear video last year, but I do have a few changes that I've made um, in the last year. So I have my pack right here. So I'm gonna start with the pack and then I'm literally just gonna pull things out of the pack and go one by one in no particular order. So got the Waymark light uh, 50 liter pack. Absolutely love it. Um, I picked it up this year. This is definitely the most comfortable lightweight pack that I have had. It does not have a hip belt pocket, but it does have really um, pretty big hip belts that um, go well around the waist. And so it carries the weight really well. So yeah, I absolutely loved it. The pack that I had last year, I had the ULA circuit pack, which was also great. One thing that I do like better about this pack is that uh, it doesn't have the mesh on the back. So on the back you have the um, kind of continued eco material, I think it's called. It's supposed to be like super water resistant or waterproof, I guess. Uh, but yeah, it made it really comfortable. The hip belt makes it really comfortable. So overall, love the pack, carried great. All right, first thing I pulled out of the pack, my tent. So I carried the uh, Six Moons Design Lunar Solo. First time using a trekking pole tent, and um, yeah, I really liked it. It was nice not having to carry the poles or anything. Pretty easy to set up, I guess. The only thing that I had to get used to was the tent needed a bigger footprint. So my hiking partner and I, we both had trekking pole tents, and so there were a couple of times where we had tight camping spots and we sort of had to finagle and maneuver in between each other to make sure our tents were able to be pitched correctly. So that's kind of the only thing. But yeah, it's got a really big interior. I could fit all my gear in there, which was really nice. Um, I didn't really deal with any condensation very much. The only time I did was when we were camping in Desolation Wilderness. It was a little bit more, uh, there was a little bit more moisture in the air there. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I woke up with condensation on my tent a couple of times, but during the desert sections and the dry sections, it, yeah, it performed great. I didn't really um, deal with condensation. So in relation to the tent, I have my trekking poles. I don't remember the brand, but I got them off of Amazon and they are designed uh, for, for women, I guess, because they're a little bit shorter and they work really well for me because I'm only 5'2", probably 5'1 and a half. Uh, so <laughs> I was having a hard time finding trekking poles that were tall enough for me or short enough for me. And so these worked really well. Now, the problem that I ran into is that they're actually technically not tall enough for the Lunar Solo to be held up all the way. So I had to actually extend it past the uh, stop sign. You can't really see it here, but there's a stop sign right here and I had to extend the trekking pole past that little stop sign. So there were a couple of times uh, where I could see my pole kind of bending a little bit uh, as it was stretched uh, a little bit thin to hold up my tent. So these trekking poles have been great, but it might be time to retire them and uh, get some new ones that are able to extend and retract to the height that I need. All right, next up is, you know it well, the Thermarest Nero Air X Lite. Um, very nice pad, the big yellow one that you see everywhere and everyone having. Uh, yeah, worked out well, I didn't puncture it. I tried to be careful with it by not, um, uh, inflating it like on the on the grass or on the rocks or anything but yeah it was great great pad you know another staple in the ultralight backpacking world the tokes titanium pot uh, yeah it worked really well I only boiled water so I probably didn't even need a pot this big this is a 750 milliliter I could probably have used a 600 or maybe even a 500 milliliter pot because all I did was boil water I didn't cook one thing in this pot. I thought I might cook ramen at one point, but I never ate it. Uh, so, but yeah, it worked really well. Had my stove in here as well. Same stove that I've had for a couple of years now, the Soto Amicus. Um, yeah, worked great. So no complaints. 
nice little towel from REI. I actually took it to use for um, the condensation on my tent, but I didn't really need it as much as I thought I did, and so I really just used it to like wipe my face and things like that, so it came in handy. Okay, the tent stakes that I had were the uh, Perea Outdoors tent stakes. I like the color of them. Um, I went to REI one time and I looked at the MSR Groundhog States and they were so expensive. I don't remember how much they were, but I remember thinking, that's really expensive for something that I'm gonna be banging into the ground. Uh, so yeah, I ended up getting these. I think it was like $10 for 10 of them. And they worked fine. I mean, yes, a few of them have bent, as uh, you can see. But I would say that's more on me because a lot of times I'll just take my foot and kind of stomp it into the ground with my foot uh, instead of taking a rock or something, kind of hammering it. So, you know, that's probably my fault. But yeah, the stakes worked well. I'll keep them and I'll probably buy them again. Trusty trowel for the hole digging. Okay, next thing I'm pulling out is my little tripod. So I have my camera here. So this is the camera that I did all my video and photography on. This is the Sony a6600. Also talked about this in my last video on gear, so I'm not gonna go into much detail. But yeah, great camera, battery life is great. It takes the larger battery in the smaller camera. So I only went through two three batteries I think I took three I took three batteries with me and then I ditched one on our zero day because I realized that I didn't need a third one yeah the batteries last forever in this little camera so it's great uh, and I have my little tripod here with the quick release plate it's just a Joby tripod I will say this tripod is not the best for stability for a camera this size this camera weighs about a pound maybe a little more it's about a pound with the lens and the little microphone and this it can hold it up but there there were times where i had a little trouble trying to get it to stay <laughs> still uh, so that's just kind of the price you pay when you're trying to stay light uh, and you're trying to also take great video if video is a priority for you then you might want to invest in a more sturdy tripod but of course you know it's gonna weigh a little bit more it's gonna just be a little bit more cumbersome but I don't know maybe it's worth it on shorter trips to take something a little bit bigger if I really want to shoot it so but this worked out fine um, yeah happy with it so this is something new for me this year I picked up the fanny pack because my pack did not have any hip belt pockets and listen I'm team fanny pack now this thing is great this is from Hightail Designs I think I'll put it in the description I don't remember the brand I do know that this was a very expensive fanny pack it was like $60 <laughs> because it's Dyneema you know the Dyneema the greatest fabric in the world Dyneema uh, <laughs> and it is kind of ripping a little bit so uh, I don't know great fanny pack overall um, it's been doing well for me I've been carrying it all summer great fanny pack nice and light so really happy with it I recommend I recommend it if you're looking to spend $60 on a fanny pack why not <laughs> again you know it well the Katadyne be free water filter Katadyne Sawyer whatever it's a great filter um, I think I got lucky with this filter because I have had some questionable water definitely some very muddy murky water that I've had to filter with this and the flow is actually still really good um, my hiking partner she had the Katadyne as well her uh, flow slowed down uh, a little bit toward the end so yeah I think I just got lucky with a good filter because I have had experiences in the past where my filter has slowed down after the JMT my filter was definitely pretty slow but yeah it's still going strong so I'm gonna hold on to it until uh, it's not flowing well anymore got the pea cloth or Kula cloth as some people call it I think that's kind of the main popular brand took two pairs of darn tough socks uh, worked out really well I used one pair for hiking and then the other pair for sleeping I didn't really switch out my socks during my hiking I just wore this the every day when I hiked and then slept in these which mostly stayed clean uh, at nighttime so clean and dry okay the classic OR helium I have I think I've given my opinions on this jacket it's not a good rain jacket but we were in the desert and we did not have one day of rain. I know it does rain on the Tahoe Rim Trail. I've heard stories of hail and storms and people getting rained on all day. We did not have one day of rain. We did the trail in 13 days and it was sunny every day. We had maybe two days of overcast skies for like half the day. And we were actually happy about it because it, it, it was pretty hot. We, got, we had some hot days. So I really just uh, wore this when I was trying not to get bit by mosquitoes and 
I think wore it at night a couple of times when it was a little chilly, but yeah, OR helium jacket. The bear can, we all love this, right? So I went back and forth about taking the bear canister or taking my ursac to hang around the tree. Now, bear canisters are required as of last year uh, in the Desolation Wilderness area, but that's only like a 25 mile stretch, I believe, that bear canisters are required. And so I, I mulled over it for a good bit. Um, you know, went on Facebook and all that stuff and you know, all the Facebook opinions, the cluster of Facebook opinions is great. <laughs> but what I would suggest is if you are trying to decide if you're gonna take a bear canister for half the trail, the whole trail, whatever, um, I would suggest to just call the TRTA, the Tahoe Rim Trail Association. They have a phone number, they have a great website and you will most likely get a person that is willing to talk to you that will answer your questions and so that's exactly what i did i called them and i talked to a lady and just kind of asked her questions and because i really wanted to know why the bear canisters weren't required for the entire trail and why it was only this one small section and she explained to me a little bit what the deal was and so ultimately i decided to take it um, we did not see any bears um, we did not have any bears coming to our camp uh, but I'm glad I took it you know it's at the end of the day yeah it's bulky it's heavy but it is easy to deal with when you just put your food away um, so yeah took the bear canister okay I think I'm gonna go through clothing so I took a second shirt for nighttime uh, mostly for nighttime or if for some reason it did end up raining and we got soaked or something I could change but I ended up taking another sun hoodie and this was the Cotopaxi, the Cotopaxi brand sun hoodie. I actually bought it uh, to hike in originally, but it doesn't really fit me well. I don't really like the fit of it. So it works well for nighttime and it's super lightweight. I think this is like five ounces, um, which is lighter than some of the other uh, shirts that I would have taken. Got the first aid kit here, very basic. I have an EpiPen uh, for like bee stings and stuff, little gauze, alcohol swabs, a little mirror, band-aids, very basic. I'm gonna be transparent for a second. One of my fears about taking the Wilderness First Aid course is that after I take it, I'm just gonna be paranoid about all the terrible things that could happen in the outdoors. And then I'm gonna be, end up carrying like a three pound, five pound first aid kit. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna take the course, but this is what I got for now. Uh, so yeah, I took a beanie, an outdoor research beanie. Love this beanie, super lightweight, really comfortable. I don't think I needed it. It was a lot warmer than I anticipated. Um, you know, for the elevation, you're pretty much hovering between six and 8,000 feet the whole time. The highest point you'll get up to is like 10,000 feet, but that's at a peak and then you're hiking back down. So. I don't think I really needed this uh, beanie. I'm glad that I had it. I did wear it most nights when it was a little chilly, but it wasn't cold to the point where I needed the beanie, but it was just more comfortable to have. Have a little rag that I used to wipe my face, my nose and stuff. Okay, I took these leggings. This is what I wore to sleep every night. Uh, these are REI leggings, super comfortable. Uh, yeah, this is what I take every night or every time I go backpacking now. Really lightweight, really comfortable, works really well. I think that's it for the clothing. Have my pillow, the Trekology, or no, this is the Hike Nature pillow, also um, something that I've had for a while. The Hike Nature pillow, which I've had for a little while. Um, it's not the most comfortable pillow to me, but it's comfortable enough. You'll survive for a few days or two weeks, you know, whatever. <laughs> so I took these OPSAC bags that are supposed to be, I guess, waterproof or not waterproof, uh, smell resistant or smell proof uh, for my trash. And I would just keep my trash in here. Um, so this worked really well. I have my Thermarest uh, sit pad, which I love. I use it just to kind of sit down when I'm having lunch. Um, I also put it outside my tent as like a little welcome mat. Um, it also helps like when I get out of my tent, I can put my shoes on in the morning uh, without having to worry about stepping on the ground. So that's really nice. And my little bag of just extra things in here, extra small things. So I'll go over that really quickly. So I took some soap this time on this hike and I'm really glad I did. I think I'm gonna continue taking soap uh, on any kind of long distance hike, anything that's more than a weekend really. It was just nice to wash my hands uh, whenever we came up to a stream or you know when we got to camp at night I would usually just take this and wash my hands with it. So this is the uh, Cita Summit Wilderness Soap I think. Wilderness Wash. Yeah, really nice. 
Got the sunglasses here. Spork, of course. The Garmin InReach Mini. So, so the thing about the Garmin, I probably turned my Garmin on maybe twice on the trail. Um, I hardly turned it on because, you know, the trail, it, it's, you're circumnavigating a pretty touristy area around Lake Tahoe. So I had cell service maybe probably 65, 70% of the time. I had at least two bars of service. There were a couple of times I had three bars at the campsite and I could watch YouTube videos or TikTok or whatever. Um, so yeah, I hardly needed to use this. I did use this a little bit to communicate with my hiking partner. Well, I should say she used it and then I would get the text like much later. So I probably wasn't very good with this on the trail, but yeah, I had service a lot of the time on the TRT. So if you have Verizon, you'll probably have service a good amount of the trail. So yeah i don't think i'll always take this backpacking and hiking uh but yeah for this particular hike i did not find i didn't have to use this very often uh got some medicine here which should be in my first aid kit but yeah it's got motrin benadryl i think uh tylenol in here so and i have some uh luco tape wrapped around it which i have actually never used <laughs> This little container, I kept my bug repellent, I kept my picaridin in here. I used the lotion and so I would just rub the lotion on myself each morning. A big lighter, just in case my stove uh, igniter wouldn't work. So I ended up taking this Repel 100% or 98.8% DEET bug repellent. There were places on the trail, specifically in Desolation Wilderness, where the mosquitoes were horrible, absolutely horrible, and so I would spray it on my legs. Um, but the mosquitoes would still bite through your shirt. They were, they were awful. Uh, I keep my sunscreen in here, just in this little container. I have my little Swiss Army knife that I take and I usually just use the scissors. And that's about it for here. I have my toothbrush and toothpaste. Uh, the toothbrush is not in here, but I would keep it in this little baggie um, with a little thing of floss. I have a little wipe for my camera lens and I have a little container of Vaseline uh, which I actually ended up using. Now one piece of clothing that I did not end up bringing were my shorts. I went through two pairs of shorts. I wore I wore one pair the first half and then I ended up switching to another pair in the second half of the trail and the pair that I wore the second half uh, did cause a little bit of chafing and those, shor those shorts were from Dick's Sporting Goods. It's the Dick's Sporting Goods brand. So I'm still on the hunt for finding some really good shorts. Um, I liked them because they had the spandex underneath, so I didn't have to worry about like my thighs chafing or anything like that. But uh, the, the waistline wasn't necessarily the softest waistline. And so I did end up chafing a little bit on kind of my lower back, my lower waist uh, toward the end of it. Thankfully, I think once I realized that I was chafing, we had like three days left and so I just, use this Vaseline and that helped a lot but yeah I'm still on the hunt for some good shorts so if you have any recommendations let me know I do carry uh, an extra bottle cap uh, for the water bottles just in case I lose one or one breaks um, and that actually did happen to my hiking partner one of her bottle caps broke and so I just gave her an extra one so that worked out well uh, have my headphones here I just use the cheap Apple wired headphones um, listen to music, podcasts, that's something that I enjoy. So I only really do that on longer trips uh, where you're just kind of in the mundane of hiking and walking. You know, it helps to just put some music on to help you climb or just kind of get through the day. And I'm still losing light. Okay. <laughs> so I took this cork ball, which was really helpful at night when, uh, you know, you're kind of tired and your muscles are tired and achy. Uh, yeah, so I would use this to kind of like massage my feet, massage my thighs in the tent before going to bed and I think that really helped. So yes, highly recommended, a good cork ball. Headlamp from Petzl, I think this is the Petzl Tika, something like that. Great headlamp, I've had it for a while so it's worked really well for me. And I think that's about it. Okay, I'm here like two weeks after shooting that original video and I realized that there were some things that I did not uh, bring or mention uh, in that other shoot and so I wanted to come back out here and show you guys uh, some of those things that I forgot to mention. First being from my sleep system, the Enlightened Equipment uh, Revelation Quilt. This is a 20 degree um, and it worked really well for me. Honestly, if you're gonna be hiking the TRT in 
late July, August, uh, you could probably get away with having a 30 degree, 30 degree quilt. Um, you know, this 20 degree was good for me, uh, but there were some nights where I took off my socks and where it did get kind of hot. We did have a couple of cold nights where it was in the 40s, and uh, during those nights, it was really nice to have the 20 degree, but for the most part, it was pretty warm. It was a lot warmer than I thought it would be, um, being at the elevation that we were at. So yeah, the 20 degree worked for me. If you sleep warmer, you know, you might want to go with a 30 degree. If you sleep colder, maybe go with a 20 degree, um, whether that's a quilt or a traditional sleeping bag. But this is what I had, 20 degree quilt, nice and light. Uh, love it, I've had it for a few years now and so works really well for me. Okay, I'm gonna go over my electronics. So this uh, wall charger that I took, got it from Amazon. Uh, really nice wall charger, very small, very light. I think this thing maybe is two ounces, maybe a little bit more than two ounces. And this is a 40 watt charger that has a uh, USB-C which is really nice. And so I would say if you're going on a backpacking trip, uh, like a long distance trip for more than five, six days, you'll probably wanna take a wall charger if you're planning on stopping in town and taking a zero or something like that. So when you're looking for a wall charger, one thing you wanna think about is the amount of watts that it has or the amount of power that it's gonna give out. And so this is a 40 watt charger. So with my iPhone 13, the 40 watt charger worked really well. I was able to charge my phone and uh, one other thing, you know, and still be able to get enough power to my phone so it could charge fast enough. So that's something that you want to think about as you're looking for a wall charger. I would say if you're trying to be efficient and maybe you're on a time crunch, uh, probably get a charger that's, you know, 40 watts or more, you know, maybe 40 to 60 watts, you know. Once you get into the 60 watt, the chargers do start getting a little big and heavy. So it, the 40 uh, worked well for me. If you're only planning on charging your phone and nothing else, you could get away with a 30 watt charger. So you'll get a nice small charger. Um, but if you're looking to charge like multiple things, uh, you know, two things at the same time uh, efficiently, so you're not waiting in McDonald's for forever, uh, I would say go with like a 40 watt charger. So it's at least giving out power enough to the phone and whatever other device you have connected to it. So another important piece in my electronics was my power bank. So I have the Nikkor 10,000 milliamp uh, charger. Uh, yeah, this charger worked really well for me. Um, this is the first time I've had the Nikkor and I know it's become pretty popular over the past couple of years. I still really like the Anchor. I feel like the Anchor is just a more solid, more reliable charger, to be honest. Um, and they do a lot better with the little lights, like the little battery indicators on the Anchor. If I were to ask, is this worth it? You know, ounces do add up. So as long as this thing is working well, I'm gonna keep taking it because it is significantly lighter than say my 20,000 or my 13,000 milliamp. I think my 13,000 is about a little bit more than nine ounces. And this is just over five ounces. So, you know, you get, you get some weight savings there so you can take other things that you like. Um, so, you know, make your decision with whatever works best for you. But yeah, Nikkor charger. <laughs> All right, so these are the charging cables that I used. So for my iPhone, I had the standard uh, USB-C to lightning cable. So I would use that in my Nikkor power bank, which had a USB-C charger. So I was able to charge my iPhone really fast, which is nice. Um, I have a, I took a USB-C to USB-C uh, to charge the power bank. And then for little things like my Garmin, my headlamp and possibly my camera if I needed to charge it, even though I had enough batteries, uh, I took a USB-C to uh, micro USB. And in the case that maybe I was in a hotel and the hotel had USB-A outlets, I bought an adapter. So a very small adapter, eh, there we go, to uh, use for that, to put on top of the USB-C. So, <laughs> Seems like a lot of cables, but it's really not. All of them are very small, as you can see, very lightweight. And yeah, I just had them in a little plastic bag, just like this, and they just sat in my little electronics bag and I carried it and it was fine. So yeah, those are my electronics. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. So we'll go back to the original video. And I think that's about it. Thanks for sticking around and watching this gear video. Hopefully uh, some of this information is helpful. I try to take everything as a learning experience and make micro adjustments, you know, as I as I continue in my backpacking experience. Um, so yeah, this was a great experience overall. Um, I was really happy overall with the gear that I chose. Um, 
And yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about every little piece of gear that you're bringing. Buy what works for you um, and what you like and take what is comfortable. If y'all have any questions, um, I'm happy to answer. All right, it's dark now, so I gotta go. <laughs> Not stick the landing. <laughs>